We begin with the crowning of a Nick 10 champion or co-champions. Three teams started tonight hoping to claim at least a piece of the championship. That's right. One team was Hananiga. The Indians played at Belvedere. The other two were Belvedere North and Harlem. Those two went head to head at Harlem. It's the Gillies heating and air conditioning game of the week. Hey, Nick Tapia back from a separated shoulder at quarterback for North. Hands it off to Xavier McElroy for the TD. 12-0 North in the second quarter. Now Harlem came back with two field goals in the first half from Angel Vasquez. One of them, this 40-yarder, and those two field goals helped Harlem take the lead 13-12. North looking to score in the second quarter at the four-yard line, but they fumbled the football, and it's recovered by Isaiah Dosey Coleman of the Huskies. That looked like it was going to be a huge play in this game. Third quarter now, McElroy pops a big run. Look at him go. He's going to take it all the way inside the 10-yard line, and that would lead to this play. Eric Roman gets his number called, takes the handoff, and there he is for the four-yard touchdown, 20-13 Blue Thunder. Harlem would answer. Nate Johnson here has Dwayne Broom in his sights, cutting across the middle, and Broom with a nice move after the catch there, and he goes 28 yards for the TD, and I'll tell you what, Tim Baylor was liking that touchdown catch. There's Tim. Yeah, Tim liked that, right? Yeah, 20 all at that point. We had ourselves a ball game. Norse Benny here coming up with a big run. He's one of the unsung heroes for this North team. Look at the cutback here by Benny. Boop. And there he goes. Huskies trying like heck to catch him. They finally do, but he's way down there deep in Harlem territory. Then Tapia going to the air. He's got Nathan Alexander for the TD. 27-20, Blue Thunder on top. McElroy later with another short TD, his second of the night. Belvedere North goes on to win it 34-20 for only the school's second conference championship. It feels great. I mean, we've had some tough losses in the past years, but I'm glad we bounced back and finished the season off strong with the win. Oh, man, it feels great, man. You know, we only had it once, and it feels a lot great, man. What was it like out there in this game tonight? It was so back and forth. Yeah, I mean, it was up and downs. You know, us in the first quarter, we didn't really get anything moving, but... In the second quarter, you know, after Walker Paulson went down, we, our team just lit up. It feels great. I mean, this is such a great program, and it's just great to be in that top spot, you know what I mean, or be sharing it. How'd you guys shake off the loss last week? Because I know that had to be a rough one to overcome, the way it kind of got away there at the end. Yeah, but it, at the end of the day, we just we knew we had to move on and focus on this week. All right, the other big game in Belvedere, Hananiga did defeat the Bucks 44-16, so Hananiga finishes up 8-1 and one and shares the Nick 10 championship with Belvedere North. Let's talk about this one with our Nick 10 analyst, Tim Bailey, who joins us now with some thoughts and on that game at Harlem, which we saw he was at. So, Tim, North bounces back from the emotional loss last week to Hananiga when it looked like they had that win in their hands. They get the job on, done on the road tonight. Maybe it wasn't the cleanest win for North, but you got to tip the, your hat to those men for defeating a good Harlem team on the road in a pressure situation. Yeah, they came up big. You know, you know that this is what good championship teams do. You know, you you, you win, you lose last week, you come back, you travel to the to, to your opponent's stadium, and you come out with a victory, and you play like you did tonight on both sides of the ball. I mean, they play well defensively, offensively as well. They did what they needed to do on the ground tonight to put that W up on the board. It was really a concerted effort on the offense and the defense tonight, special teams as well. So, you know, congratulations to, uh, you know, both teams, co-champions, uh, Belvedere North here and Harlem. Excuse me, not Harlem, but Hananiga. Right. Yep. Going into this game, it was a matchup of Jamani Muhammad speed on the edge and North speed on defense. What did you see when those two units were on the field? Well, you know, again, like I just stated earlier, you know, I think, you know, what they did with Jamani, they just didn't allow Jamani to go, you know, 70 or 80 yards like he has been in the last couple of weeks. But... You know, he was still getting to that second and third level. Um, you know, again, you know, Belvedere North's defense, you got to give them credit. They were able to bring Jamani down on one tackle at, uh, excuse me, on one tackle at times. So, you know, he, he, again, you know, you can't really stop Jamani. You can contain him, but you can't really stop him. And I think Coach Beck would agree with me. Uh, but what Belvedere North actually was able to do on defense of just really, you know, just really focusing in on understanding where Jamani is at all times on that field and then coming up with big, big uh, defensive stops. 
Well, North got Nick Tapia back at quarterback, which is big for them going into the playoffs to get that game under his belt because he missed three games with the shoulder injury. But we saw a lot of guys contribute for North once again as usual. How valuable is that depth going to be for North now as they move into the playoffs? I think it's going to be huge for them. I think, you know, what they have at, at some key positions, particularly at the quarterback position, even though we didn't see Bucci tonight, I think if, if something happens to Tapia, I think Bucci is going to be able to come in and be able to carry that load as he did last week against Hanamiga. Uh, despite the loss but you know they have a few other playmakers in other areas they had a couple injuries tonight I think Alexander went out with a concussion I believe he had an injury he left on the cart um, we didn't see him return so hopefully he gets back next week um, you know they're, they're, they're going to be they're going to be good I think Belvedere North is really going to be able to make some good noise in the playoffs with their depth and the goal every Friday is to get a win but the main thing the coaches want to see is improvement in their teams how much of that improvement have you seen for Harlem on the offense and the defense? I've seen really, you know, as it relates to offense, I've seen really improvement. You know, you know, in the weeks, you know, prior to this game here, you know, I would always say, you know, Harlem really needs to improve, you know, at the actual interior line on that front offensive line. They're not really doing as well as they probably could at the point of attack. Tonight I saw, I saw some improvement, you know, what they were doing on the offense. Um, schematically, they had what they wanted, but Harlem just didn't really execute when they had the opportunity to execute, but a much more improved offense. Defensively, um, they just need to tackle. I think right now that's Harlem's Achilles heel right now. You know, they missed a lot of big tackles tonight. Um, you know, Mac, Mac, uh, McElroy actually looked like a baby Jerome Bettis tonight. <laughs> Congratulations to him. But on defense, Harlem has to be able to learn, I mean, be able to be better tacklers in order to be able to make a good push in the playoffs. I will say, I like Harlem's balance now on offense. They've got it. They've got the, yeah. that nice combo Absolutely. between the run and the pass game. All right, so it appears six Nick 10 teams are going to be in the playoffs. Hananiga, Belvedere North, Harlem, Guilford, Boylan, and Freeport. So let's let that soak in for just a second as you see their records there. All right, now that, gonna, that brings us to our over-under question. How many of those Nick 10 teams out of the six are going to make it past the first round of the playoffs? The over-under is set at 2.5. Tim, what do you think? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm betting on my guys, you know, Scott. I'm betting on my guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with four. I'm going to go with four here. Four teams Absolutely. will make it through the first yeah. round. Yeah, I, I feel that strongly. Okay. Yeah. All right. What kind of vibe you got there, Drew? I agree with you, Tim. You know, I'm obviously going to be positive here, and I, I, why not? Yeah. Four teams? Let's yeah. do it. We got some good teams in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, we know, do. Freeport made it in. Congratulations, uh, <laughs> Freeport. Um, you know, but I, I think, you know, going forward, I think, uh, you know, we're going to see some teams actually move forward in that in that first round. All right. I'm going to be the party pooper here a little bit because <laughs> I, I want all of our teams to get past the first round, but I'm going under. I think two are going to make it. I think some of these teams are going to have a tough draw. And the Nick 10, in my opinion, is a little down right. as a whole this year. I agree. But well, I'm curious to see how Guilford does because they're finished on a roll here. Yeah. So they're, they're yeah. going to be interesting. Right. Well, folks, if you want more from Tim on Nick 10 football, check out the Bailey Pod. You can find it on YouTube. This week, his guest is Hananiga football coach Brian Zimmerman, who became the winningest coach in school history, and Harold Bone, the sports editor of Rockton Roscoe News.